Where the sea meets land, there is an environment where few survive. A place of challenging conditions and constant changes. And that is where my mission took me. A mission that did not really go as planned. Good morning. I've been following someone on Instagram for a while called James. And some time ago, he contacted me asking me for a favor. That's why I woke up before six in the morning. And that's why I still can't think properly. Yeah. Okay, Maria, so why are you waking up so early to do someone a favor? Good question. We are going, and by we I mean me and my mommy, who's my assistant today. Thank you, mommy. We are going to Praia das Avencas, which is, which is around 20 minutes from Lisbon, where I was born and grew up. We want to catch the low tide, and I will explain to you why in a second. But also we want to go at a time of the day when there are not many people around, because it is summer and later it's going to be crowded with beachgoers. And we don't like those. There's no one at the beach. I mean, there's two people far, far away at the beach. That's the perk of waking up early and coming early. Just a crazy lady with the camera and the tripod with a bunch of bottles. That's me. James has been spying on the microbial world for some time now. And you can see the results of his spionage in a tiny channel called Journey to the Microcosms. If you don't know about this channel, it's awesome. It's all about the microcosms. And it is microbiologist approved. Go check it out, it's really cool. But basically, he is looking for a very specific ciliate called Kentophoros that only exists in marine sediments. Apparently, it likes to live in the spaces in between the sand grains. So that's why we are here today. You see, James doesn't live close to the sea and he was looking for someone who can take marine samples for him. And even though I also don't live near the sea because I live in Austria, which is a landlocked country, I do come to Portugal, my home, very often. So today, we're gonna sample. Back to the roots. The little ciliates I am looking for, or, the, or that James is looking for, live in a anoxic zone in the sand. So an area where there's less oxygen. So we have to dig a little hole to collect the sand that is below the surface. That's what we're doing. done success the low tide today is was not super low so it's actually difficult to show you also what I wanted to show you I wanted to show you a little bit of the life that lives in the tidal pools because I used to come here a lot as a kid of course my mom being the biologist she is would always take me to see the ponds and teach me about the animals which is something I've always loved but you know the ponds don't necessarily look like something super exciting, but the reality is if you think about it, the animals that live in these pools are pretty badass. They have developed adaptations to be able to survive underwater and outside of the water for in unknown periods of time. And that's badass, you know? We want to find also things that, other things, not only sand, that might have some microbial life on them, like algae, anything with a biofilm, which is basically just a layer of goo where microbes live. Anything that might be cool for drinks to look at under the microscope. This area is called the intertidal zone. It's the coastal area that is underwater during high tide and exposed during low tide. Many animals live here in tide pools, which are little ponds that form in the rock along the coastline. These animals must survive hours of exposure to sunlight, low oxygen concentrations, large temperature variations, and predators. 
On the other hand, these pools provide higher food availability and protection against currents and crashing waves. To survive this ever-changing environment, animals have developed interesting adaptations. Most of the fish you can find in these pools are masters of camouflage and will quickly disappear into holes in the rocks at the slightest movement. Other animals just cling very tightly to any rock or any surface they can. Barnacles, for example, produce one of the strongest cements in the world. Anemones also have an interesting adaptation. When exposed to air, they retract their tentacles into a little pillow-like structure, keeping themselves moist and preventing damage to the tentacles. Of course, they then release the tentacles once the water comes back with the high tide. When that happens, these pools are replenished with new fresh seawater, and the cycle continues. I wanted to come here during low tide because I wanted to collect some biofilm from the rocks and also some sand. But unfortunately the low tide was not low enough to create pools with sandy bottoms. So hopefully the sand that we collected outside the tide pools will be enough to find something interesting. Sampling done, then I have to go home, pack all this and immediately send it. I have to call the UPS to collect all the samples from my house. Hopefully that'll go smoothly because it is quite heavy. It's already 10. The traffic should be calmer, so smooth ride home. And processing the samples and get them ready to ship. They should be shipped as fast as possible because we want the things to not die. So let's do this. You know what guys, I'm pretty tired. Not gonna lie. Well, like a good kind of tired, like a high on beach, you know? High on the sea. Could do this every day. Every morning, coming to the beach, doing some sampling, going in the water, and then having some late breakfast. Not too shabby. This moment, no one can tell where we should go. Oh, it's coming. We thought we had it, the truth about our common soul. That it was fantasy, nothing to put belief in. As soon as we saw. We made it home and now it's time to pack. Time to put everything in that box, from this bag to that box, check if all the labels are correct, call the posting service and ship it away. Well, things are not going as expected. Yesterday, after I finished packing everything, I did a wrap-up video. Wrap-up. I did a wrap-up video talking about how the sampling was and the day was and how now I was excited to see what James was going to find in our samples. And it turns out that today in the morning, so today is the next day from the footage you just saw, we saw that the package had been retained in Germany. And I was like, immediately like, uh-oh. That's not a good sign. So I called them, I called the shipping company, and they told me that the package is being retained for physical evaluation. So they're gonna go in there and check what is in the package. Three things can come out of this. The first one, they deem the package suspicious for whatever reason. They don't like sand or because there's water in there, maybe they think I'm trying to sell, I don't know, alcohol or send alcohol because you can't, send alcoholic drinks. I don't know. If that is the case, the package is going bye-bye. Like, into smithereens, bye-bye package, bye-bye sampling, 
Auf Wiedersehen. The second option would be that they check everything. Um, you know, they look, they open it, they check, okay, this is kind of weird. You know, why was someone sending sand and some algae to someone else from Portugal to Poland? Odd, but whatever, looks fine. They close it, send it to James, and James can analyze the samples and check what amazing microbial life is in there. The third option is they check everything, they open everything, they search for all sorts of illicit things inside the bottles, they remove all the stuff from the bottles in which they will create a total mess, and then somehow they still try to ship it after they've done all that to James, and James receives a, well, a less than pleasant, pleasant package. <laughs> Obviously, the second option would be the best one. The problem is, even if they just open it and check the samples and decide that everything is fine and they send it, James will probably only receive it by Monday. Now, <laughs> we pay for the express priority delivery. It should have been delivered today by nine in the morning and that did not happen. And the problem is today is Friday. It's Monday is in three days to Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, and that's not good. It's gonna be dead. <laughs> No good oh, no good oh. I talked to James, he was super nice about it. You know, he said that maybe if they do end up sending the samples, maybe we can still find some something interesting in the sand. We will guess, we will see. So yeah, now I'm just waiting. I The nice guy on the phone just said, wait, uh, check for the progress of your package online through your tracking number. That's what I've been doing. So far, nothing new. It's still in Germany doing something I don't know. And even though this is not necessarily a research or this, I'm not doing this for a research project, this is the type of issues that scientists or people responsible for shipping samples have to deal with all the time. I will keep you updated on the whatever happens next. All right, news, yay. Our package has been cleared, no illicit, substances have been found in it. Now we just uh, need to wait. I'm pretty sure the package is only going to arrive on Monday, which means we will have to see in which state our samples arrive. Uh, I'm pretty sure the algae samples are not gonna be it. Ew. Oh my god. I, James, I'm so sorry if you have to open those samples. They're not gonna be smelling good. But anyways, I do hope they arrive on Monday. I hope that they didn't completely destroy the samples and that there's still something that we can salvage from from any of the things I sent, maybe some sand. Some of these organisms are really resistant. That's why they are also, that's, that's also why they are awesome. Just wait and see. Okay guys, so I am happy to announce that the samples have landed. The eagle has landed and the samples did arrive in Poland. Unfortunately, I suspect not all of the samples, but at least something arrived. Apparently the lid from some of the jars that we sent, so they were all plastic, but they had more a jar-like form. They were a bit loose. Um, we tight tightened them pretty well when we sent them. So I'm pretty sure they opened the, the the little jars and took all the algae out. It does look like there's much less algae in there than there was than the ones we sent. So I, I'm pretty sure they inspected all of the stuff. They opened it and inspected to check if we were smuggling something or whatever. I don't know. But we weren't, so yay, congratulations. <laughs> but the reason I am talking to you right now is because James has just posted on his Instagram, which you should definitely check, by the way. It's fantastic. Like, the stuff he posts there is so beautiful. The microcosm world, it, it's mwah, you know? It's mwah. Check it out. But he just posted the cutest thing ever. Oh my God. This guy was in our samples. It's a tardigrade. And he was in our samples. <laughs> I mean, it's really, really cute. You know, I didn't even know that we had tardigrades in the sand in Portugal. I just didn't consider that option. It's not that I ever really thought very strongly about it. They are everywhere, so why wouldn't they be in the sand in Portugal? But I just had never considered it. And it's so awesome. 
to see him now, go follow go follow Jam and Germs on on Instagram. I'll leave it also. I'll leave his handle here somewhere. Oh my God! So after all the hurdles, the mission was actually successful. I'm so happy that. He did manage to find something. I think he's still going through the samples, looking for the ciliates. So far, nothing. Um, so, yeah. But at least something. You know, at least tardigrades. At least not everything was dead in the sample. So that's pretty awesome and fantastic. The mission was not a complete failure. <laughs> I think this video is probably already pretty long. So I will make another video more specifically about the microbial life that James will find in our samples. So there will be a part two to this video. If you would like to support what I do on this channel, there is a new thanks button down below somewhere, either here. I think it's here. Well, it's just a one-time donation button if you want to help me in that way. Otherwise, you can check out my Patreon. My The link will be down in the description. My book has been launched you can help me by buying it and making a little kid happy. <laughs> yes, I wanted to thank all of you who bought my book and who people who sent me messages saying that they liked it. It's really rewarding to see kids enjoying something I created. I don't know. It's just so fulfilling. It, it's, it was so beautiful to see, you know? So thank you for that. Feel free to tag me in, in if you have the book or if you ordered it and you received it. Feel free to tag me on Instagram. I love seeing people enjoying the things I make. Don't forget to share this video and subscribe if you like what you see here. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, thank you very much to all of my Patreons for supporting this and my second gaming slash whatever channel. Also <laughs> linked down below. Thank you very much and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.